Hey guys, welcome back. So today I want to do a quick video and talk about traveling with firearms on airlines. Now recently I've been doing a lot of traveling and I've been taking with me my personal defensive carry handgun to these various places. And most recently I've been to Texas and Oklahoma to do some hunting. And once again, I took my personal defense firearm with me. Now there's some very strict regulations, which are federal laws that must be followed when traveling aboard an aircraft, a commercial aircraft. And that's what I wanna talk about in this video. I wanna talk about the type of case that you must use, the types of locks you must use, the process for checking the firearms in at the airline, and ammunition and magazines and things like that. Now, pretty much all the airlines are gonna follow the same federal regulations. Some airlines may do certain things differently, some airlines, for example, will charge a fee for checking a firearm into their aircraft. I traveled with United most recently and they didn't have any fees or anything like that tacked on. So first of all, let's talk about the case that you must use when you travel on an airplane. If you buy a handgun or a rifle, the case that it comes in, 99.9% .9 of the time, even if it has the locking rings on it, it's not gonna be TSA approved. The TSA, is looking for a hard shell case that is non-flexible whatsoever that has enough locking points that when the case is locked, they can't pry it open and stick a finger in and touch the gun. It doesn't matter if they can get the gun out of the case or not. If they can just pry it open and see the firearm or touch it a half of an inch open, they're gonna tell you that the case is not approved. I know this because it's happened to me, all right? So I had to call my wife, come back to the airport and pick up my handgun. So buy a TSA approved case. Pelican cases like this IM2050 are approved for TSA usage. These cases are just like every other Pelican case, they're very hard plastic, they're not flexible whatsoever. They come with two locking points on either side and I recommend locking both. That keeps them from opening the locks on the side and getting it just open a little bit, which you can do if you only lock one side, you can pry it open and if it's not locked, they're gonna say no go. So make sure you use both locking points. This case also, and this isn't re really required, has a pressure release valve. It's going into a cargo hold. The, the handgun, the ammunition doesn't really care whether or not it, it's the pressure differences of the atmosphere, that's not an issue. But it's also watertight, shock proof, and has a lot of nice features on the inside. So let's take a look inside this TSA approved case. This one has two latches, one on each side, and on the inside, you'll see that I have my firearm. This one is pre-cut and this has a little insert. It has squares that you can pull, pluck out and customize it to your firearm, but it also has one big firearm general uh, plug that you can pull out, which is what I've done. You can see where I started to trace the outline of my handgun over here before I realized that. And um, this is what the shape is of the pre-cut plug that I pulled out. This is my CZ75 PO1 compact in there. Now, you'll notice that this is a deep case, and I really like this case for this reason, because not only do I have my handgun in it, but when I take this top layer out, inside I have two boxes of ammunition and a loaded magazine. So let's talk about the ammunition here in a few minutes, but I have the ammo here, which must be locked up as well, the handgun on top, and I can seal it all up into one small package, place it into another bag, and off I go. Now let's talk about that, placing this into another bag or traveling with a rifle case, which is standalone, which won't be in another bag. The TSA mandates that these cases be locked with non-TSA locks. And what is a TSA lock? A TSA lock looks like this. And this is just one of many. This is a little master lock. This lock is designed so the TSA can get into your, system, your, your locked baggage or whatever it is without you being present. They have a master key or a master combination that they can get into these locks. A lot of people put those on suitcases, okay? You cannot use those on these cases, on handguns or rifle cases. You must have locks that only you have the key to and you must have those keys on you. You may get a call over the, the loudspeaker system at the airport that they may say, hey, come down, we want you to open up your case, we need to look inside. Doesn't happen very often, but it does happen. So you must keep the keys on you. Don't throw the keys in the checked baggage. Make sure the keys stay with you. The gun goes into the checked baggage. That's true of both handguns and rifles. These TSA locks are handy for putting the handgun into the checked baggage that's much larger, that has your clothes, and locking it up, okay? But don't use these 
on the gun case because if the lady or the man behind the counter knows what they're doing, and many times they don't, I found that out the hard way again, uh, but if they do know what they're talking about, they're going to say, hey, the locks aren't approved and now you can't board your flight with the case because you're probably not going to find a master lock at the airport. All right, so when you first get to the airport, go into where you normally check in and you'll have little kiosks there typically. You're going to check into your flight. You can even have your e-ticket, but you go to the same counter and just walk up and you declare the firearm. This is very important. Don't put the firearm in a carry-on bag. Declare the firearm at the baggage check. They'll go through a simple process. They'll ask you about the firearm if it's unloaded. Uh, sometimes they want to see the handgun or rifle. Other times they don't. They'll just take your word for it that it's empty. They'll put a little slip in the baggage in the case of a pistol um, in the bag that I have this in, they're going to put a little slip in it saying that there's a firearm in there and it's been approved. They're going to make you sign it, okay? And then they put it on a little conveyor belt and you go about your business and go on to your aircraft. Now, things that you cannot take with you aboard the aircraft that must be checked with the firearm. Obviously, ammunition has to go into a locked container. Now, that's the reason why I like this particular unit uh, from Pelican is because it has the ammunition and the firearm with it. Any magazines have to be in a locked container. They can't go on board with you on the aircraft. Some things like rifle scopes can go on board with you on the aircraft. In my case, when I'm traveling with my thermal optics, I'm not checking those bad boys into luggage. Federal law allows for me to actually put those in my backpack and take them onto the aircraft. Other gun parts, such as suppressors or firing pins, barrels, anything that is part of a firearm, cannot be taken on board with you. They make an exception only for optics, okay? Now let's talk about the ammunition. You'll notice that in my case that I have the gun on top and the ammunition on the bottom. The ammunition can be left in its cases like it is here. It can be loaded into a magazine as it is here, but you can only take 11 pounds of ammunition. You can't take ammunition over 75 caliber, which pretty much covers everything. Any shotgun shell, 9mm, 45, 44 mag, 308, 30-06, whatever it is, the ammunition's fine with the airlines as long as you don't take more than 11 pounds of it. Some people will say 50 rounds or whatever. I had a chat with a TSA agent on my most recent uh, travel and ask them what their regulations were. We went through item by item so I could make this video and they said 11 pounds of ammunition, which is a substantial amount of ammunition. So don't worry about taking 50 rounds for your handgun or 100 rounds with your handgun unless you're carrying some pretty darn heavy loads because it's gonna take quite a bit to get to 11 pounds. So the ammunition, once again, must be locked up into a box. So if you don't have a container like this Pelican, you're now going to have to get a separate locked box with the same type of locking mechanisms that's made out of the same hard material that they can't pry open and touch the ammunition because it has to be locked up just like a handgun. It's treated just like a handgun. So again, I highly recommend this Pelican IM2050 case, but you can also find other cases out there. This one's gonna cost you about 110 bucks. I bought this one at Gander Mountain before my most recent trip because I could put everything in one container. Now I have gotten away with taking my uh, holster on board with me in my carry-on. They don't know what it is. I use a Kydex holster. I just put it in my carry-on baggage because it doesn't fit in here. Uh, I don't believe you're going to get into any problems with the holster because it is not considered a firearm part, just like a scope is not considered a firearm part. So, do I recommend traveling with a firearm? Absolutely, guys. Now, keep in mind you can travel anywhere you want to because of a Federal law calls, called the right of free passage. Now, wherever you're going, you have to make sure that you're in compliance with the laws of that state, whatever your final destination is. Let's say that my final destination is San Francisco, California. Obviously, I'm not gonna be taking my CZ with me to San Francisco, California um, as a concealed carry firearm. So if you're traveling with suppressors, NF8 items, you know, machine guns, short-barreled rifles, you must make sure that the, the state that you're going to, your final destination, it is legal to have those with you. Unless you're a federally firearms or federal firearms license holder like myself, then I can pretty much do whatever I want. <laughs> it's kind of nice. So anyway, guys, 
that's pretty much it in a nutshell. If you have any questions about anything you've seen in this video, of course you can ask those questions down below. I do try to stick around for the first couple of days after a video goes live to answer the questions you guys may have. Now guys, you may have some questions about traveling with a firearm, or you may have some uh, bits of information that I forgot to include in this video. Please, po please post those down below. I like to read them and it also helps the other viewers out there. And if you would like to support the Military Arms Channel, you can swing by and check out Copper Custom. It's our online store, and it's the best possible way to support us here at the channel. And if you haven't already, please be sure to check out Full30.com. That's Full30.com. We've taken all the web's best firearms content creators and brought them under one roof, and that is Full30.com. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll talk to you guys soon.